guys, PDF and Pitch Tools, awesome to see you here again. Today I want to do a video on plasma cutter setup. It's quite easy to set them up and uh, yeah, get you cutting for the first time or you might just want to refresh on what you're doing. Anyway guys, have a look at the video, tell me what you think. And also remember guys, if you like my video, subscribe. We're always uh, glad to have new subscribers on the channel. Cheers. Alright guys, so uh, basic plasma cutter setup. This is my trusty cut 40, cut 40, cut 50. Cut 60, it doesn't really make much difference, it's all the same really, um, well I think they are, they're all the same sort of machine. Um, yeah, well I will take this video from as if you just got a new one I suppose, because um, some of you guys watching my channel don't um, haven't started plasma cutting yet, and some of you would have already started, so if this gets too boring just skip along a little bit, and um, yeah, we'll uh, see how you go. Uh, anyway, so we've just got uh, on my cut 40 machine here, it's just your basic on off switch here, you got your OC light here, which is what I can make out as overcurrent. Now, I've had this machine for a few years. Um, I blew this once. This light came on, and the machine didn't go. And uh, I took it back to where I brought it from, and it was a little um, diode had blown in the machine itself. But that was my fault, because I was totally using it out of the um, range which it was designed to do. I wasn't giving it time to cool down. I was cutting off some um, grouser plates on a, on a digger. And um, yeah, I was cutting like for half an hour on end, just just keep going and going and going, and it just didn't do the machine any good at all. So since then, I've learned a little bit, and um, yeah, that we um, we don't run it quite as hard as what we used to. Oh, oh sorry, guys, there's a helicopter going over or something. Um, yeah, just bear with me. So anyway, you'll have a machine that looks something like this when you buy it, whether you buy it from eBay or Amazon or whatever. Um, be much the same as this. I don't think you guys are into three phase gear because I'm not anyway. I can't run three phase in my workshop, so you are stuck with the smaller machines like that. Probably up to about 50 amp. That's about the maximum you're going to do on 110 or 240 volt, depending where on the where in the world you are. I'm in New Zealand, so I'm running 240 volt machines. Um, yeah, so you're basically you're going to have um, here is where your torch goes into here, and the the hole in there is where your compressed air or whatever gas you're running comes out of. And uh, here is just a two prong where your where you cord screws in from your torch. There's a cord that comes in here, and that's just like an on off switch that just turns the machine on and off when you're going to cut things. And we've got here two courses, you just your earth, your, um, your earth um, clip. So you'll have that with your machine, you have an earth clip like so, or something that looks very much similar to that. Yeah, and the other end of that is here. That just goes into your machine like that, and you just tighten it up, like so. It's pretty basic. And you'll have a torch of some description. I mind runs a PT31 torch, but you may have a torch that looks something like this, which will be an AG60 torch, uh, and also another AG60 torch, just different styles, as you notice. And this is a PT31 torch, like the first one I showed you, but once again, it's a different style. It just depends what manufacturer and they put what torch they put on it and also here is an SG51 torch all run the same sort of basic machine the cut 40 the cut 50 machines run all these sort of torches now if you get into a like a these are just a generic plasma cutter like these are a Chinese made plasma cutter if you get into something more brand name like your local brand names like USA made in the USA or made in Canada or, or wherever you'll find that the, they use their own torches basically and um they may be a little bit better quality than this, but I can tell you for nothing that the consumables, because all these you are consumables that you have to replace, if you're buying a brand name machine, nine times out of ten, the consumables are a lot more expensive to run from a brand name machine than what they are, a generic Chinese machine, like the likes of, well, I, that's what I buy anyway, like I said, it's, that's what I buy. I don't buy the brand name stuff because I'm basically cheap. Um, but I just like something that, that, that gets me the job done, and um, yeah. So this is all good for a, a workshop machine, um, just light stuff, you don't want to be doing it for a living using one of these little machines because they, they, they basically won't handle it. But I mean if you're doing a couple of hours a day cutting, it's fine, you know, up, up to 10 mil plate, up to maybe 3 quarters of an inch. Um, particular machine, fine. like I say, I'm running 240 volts, I'm running a 15 amp plug, if you can see the 15 amp on it or not, it's a 15 amp plug here, um, which is the biggest amperage I can run on on single phase in New Zealand at running at 240 volt and as you can see it's bigger than a normal plug this is a normal plug here and you can see that the, if I compare them both if we if we put them both side by side you can see here that the the earth pin on here is a lot larger than the earth pin on this one 
um, because these um, these machines suck the power, they suck the juice, something something wicked. So uh, the more juice and the more earthing you can get out of your thing, the better. And also another point, guys, don't run these things on an extension cord. They don't work. They don't work very well at all. And also if you have your extension cord long enough, they won't work at all. But if you have a kink or you have it um, curled up or something in a coil, it'll get hot and it'll start smoking because they suck quite a bit of power. So um, on 110 volt, I don't know if you can run it at 15 amp or not, but uh, I'll get you guys to find out because um, a lot of you guys are in the US watching this and like I say, I'm in New Zealand. Right. So now we come to the to the back end of the machine like so and here we've got a, a, our water trap here and uh, I'm running this on compressed air and so my compressed air comes in here you set whatever you want to on here to whatever the uh, pressure you want and what I suggest you do is whatever your compressor will run at because these take quite a lot of air as well and um, I've got a, um, the biggest compressor that I can run on a single phase in my workshop as well um, I suggest the minimum compressor you're going to have to need is like 20 gallon and I would uh, start it running at the, the basically the maximum pressure to run at without burning the compressor out of course and then um, whatever that may be and maybe 90 psi or whatever it cuts out at I would set this here to half of what the compressor is doing to start off with and that'll give you a good baseline for cutting because the more pressure you can put through here through your machine the more air pressure the, basically the thicker material you can cut without buggering your consumables because um, you've got to think about buying the consumables as well because if you don't really cut properly then they burn out really really quick I'll show you a tip on doing that in a minute uh, just you know halfway through this video or something I'll, I'll crank this machine up and, and I'll show you try and how not to burn your consumables out when you're first learning but I would set this pressure to about half of what, you, what your compressor can do so if you're running at 90 psi I'd set this about 40 45 psi just until you get a feel of your torch until you get a feel of your torch, you know, and you, and you, and you get some idea of, of what it'll cut and what, how it'll cut and what pressure you need. And then you can alter this backwards and forwards and you can set your compressor up to run, you know, not so hard. But, um, yeah, oh, when, I'm, when I'm cutting quite long lengths with this, my compressor has a really hard job of keeping up, but I just can't get a bigger compressor on the, on the amount of voltage that I've got in this workshop. I don't know if you guys are the same, but if you've got three phase, you're lucky, but um, I haven't. So I'm stuck with what I've got, which is single phase 240 volt. But some of you guys, like I say, may only have um, single phase 110 volt. Right, so we come back to the front of our machine, guys. Like I said before, it's just an on-off switch, uh, an overcurrent switch. And here we have, mine is a um, 40 amp, but uh, 50 amps the same. We have a here a um, amperage here. Um, because the higher you go, the thicker plate you can cut. But bearing in mind, the higher you go, the more power it sucks. The more your compressor is going to run, the higher air pressure you need, the more it's going to try and suck out of the out of the uh, the power you got available in your workshop or whatever. So what I try and do is is just test it as I'm going and just put it so it cuts comfortably without going flat out all the time and try and do the same with your compressor because it just saves a lot of aggravation because there's nothing worse like if you have this on flat out and your compressor can't keep up properly, your compressor will stop. You'll lose air pressure. You will lose your cut and you have to start basically all over again or your compressor will get that hot that it won't restart which is not what you don't want you don't want your compressor running all the time it's got to go on and off so it's got time to cool down a little bit um yeah so the minimum would be 20 gallon i'd say um that's what i'm running but uh, i'd like a bigger one but you know like i say it's not happening at the moment so let's get uh the bits and pieces and hook them up like i say this is our earth lead so we'll hook them in there it just twists like so until it's locked in there a uh, trick for you guys too is make sure that this is screwed in there properly and tight. It does, it's like a semi-lock on there because if it doesn't, it will still work, but it'll arc in the inside here and then you'll find within two or three months that you've, you've arced out the inside here and you can never get a proper fit and you're going to have to replace this fitting. So just a little trick to keep in mind guys. Uh, make sure it's tight like so. And then uh, what you need is your torch. We'll go and get the torch. which is here so we've got here which is just our hose for our whatever we're using as as a um as a medium for the for the plasma so i'm using compressed air like i say so we'll put this up on here this is where your compressed air or whatever gas you're using goes through that just goes on that one and then on this one here is just a little two-pronged switch 
that just goes to your um, torch handle here on off on off and all this does is just a little switch that just tells the machine that you were uh, going on and we're going off so we'll hook them in there like so and this is just a HF machine high frequency non pilot arc machine uh, which means that when you push the button the flame doesn't come out of here until you touch it on the work and then it starts cutting um, if you want to convert one of these to a uh, pilot arc, check the video at the top. I've got a video on how to do that without basically any tools at all. Um, it works for 99% of the plasma cutters. Um, anyway, guys, so what I'll do is I'll crank up my compressor and um, I'll show you a little tip on trying not to burn out these consumables because when you first start, you go through a lot of these because you don't really... Because I'll show you. Now, because this is quite thin still, about four mil, it's not so bad. You can you can pop a hole through it and get the thing to blow right through. Like that, see? And it blows right through. Which is not too bad for your for your tips. But if you're trying to cut something a bit thicker like that, for example, and you try and blow that straight through, I'll show you what happens. See that? It's basically Just starting to go through it now, but it blew a whole lot of stuff back into this tip. So, what you should do, or what I do basically, is instead of when you're cutting, you're going straight down on an angle like that, right? You're going straight down like I won't put it on my hand because I'm going to burn myself. You're going straight down like that. But that's all very well once you've got a hole through whatever you're cutting. But I turn it my tip like so. So, at least. Some of the shit can blow off the top so it's not blowing all the way back. And when you finish you blow a hole through it, then straighten it up, if you understand what I'm saying. I'll show you. See what I mean? I don't know if you can see that or not. But I went through first. I went through on an angle like so and then straighten it up and then come back because if you go straight all the, all the time all the stuff blows back up into your torch and it basically destroys your tip and it will destroy your tip in quarter of the amount of time so another way is to drill a hole through whatever you're cutting first which I think is a load of rubbish but anyway that's what they say to do drill a hole and then you've got something the stuff will blow straight through and then you can cut but um, I just prefer to just go on an angle Once you've got a hole through whatever you're cutting, it's easy because you, you've got no blowback then. And no blowback means that your consumables last a lot longer. Um, that's just a little tip anyway, that's what I've learnt. Um, and it's, this is even not so bad here. Oh, that's hot now, I won't pick that up. But if you're trying to cut something three quarters of an inch, you're just blowing back all the time. And you'll find that before you even get through it, before you even knock through it the first time, before you can even start cutting, that you've burned out a tip. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's just my tip. Um, anyway, that's it for the video. I hope you learned a little bit. I hope it wasn't too boring for you. Remember, I always like you guys to uh, drop a comment or subscribe or give me a thumbs up or something. Uh, good to see you back again and we'll see you next time.